When you first open up 3D Studio Max, you'll see the Essential Skill Movies pop-up dialog. If you don't need this, you can simply close it. However, while you're first learning the software, this is a great way to access some basic skills. To see an overview of the interface, to understand how to basically create objects, edit objects, assign materials, set up lights and cameras, and set up a basic animation. In this video, we'll look at an overview of the 3D Studio interface. In versions 2010 and 11, when it initially opens, you'll see this new user interface that's got the darkened color. I actually think that the older interface version of 2009 and earlier is easier on the eyes. I'm going to begin by locating the older interface um, scheme and use that. We'll go to the Customize pull-down, go to where it says Load Custom UI Scheme, and I'll trace down a path here to Program Files, Autodesk, 3DS Mask, uh, 2010, and UI. And inside there I can find the 2009 interface. I'm going to go ahead and open that, and once it loads up, You'll notice that uh, the interface is a little bit lighter and also there's some coloration that go with some of the key tools and features. I like this because it's easier to locate things with my eyes. If you prefer to work with a darker colored interface, uh, that's just fine. Across the top of the interface, we see the main toolbar. This includes um, a series of icons that allow us to select and grab items to move, rotate, and scale and to mirror and align. There's a number of other items here in the main toolbar that are also important. Some of those are going to be more important the further you get into 3D Studio. At the moment, the primary areas of concern, of course, are these tools that I just noted. Move, rotate, scale, mirror, and align. You'll notice up here there's a select object and select by name. We'll come back to this shortly. These are important tools um, in terms of selecting items that are a part of your model file. On the far right hand side we'll see material editor, rendering setup, and uh, a couple of other similar tools that allow us to quickly render once we've set up our rendering profile. On the right hand side of the menu we see what is called the command panel. This is the kind of workhorse area of 3D Studio and it's broken up into a series of tabs and each of these tabs correspond to various stages of work that you might be undertaking. So at first we have the Create tab, which allows us to create um, anything from geometries in the scene uh, to setting up cameras, lights, space warp systems, and so forth. Next to that is the Modify tab, which allows us to modify an item once it's placed in the scene. We have the Hierarchy tab, which allows us to organize things for kinematic systems. We have a Motion tab, which allows us to control or constrain the motion of items um, later on when we're animating objects in a scene. We have the display tab which allows us to select and hide items that are in our scene. And we have the utilities tab which allows us to get to a number of features, uh, most importantly in terms of the animation class, a capacity to um, run the simulation. Across the bottom portion of the interface, um, importantly here in the lower right hand corner, we find all the tools that allow us to uh, orbit, zoom, and pan. Immediately adjacent to that we see controls, video controllers, so once we have an animation set up. Uh, we can actually see that played back in real time inside the 3D Studio Max interface. And a very key uh, button for you here is time configuration, which is located right here next to the frame count. And uh, we'll come back to that shortly. The reciprocal to this immediately above is the rendering setup. So before you're going to get any kind of output, you'll need to be able to set up your renderings and you'll need to set up any time configuration that's going to correspond to animations you might be producing. Uh, over here is a timeline. The timeline corresponds to whatever selected. There's a more elaborate timeline that we can look at to see the overall profile of the model file and we'll come to that eventually. Um, we see a transform type inbox down here, X, Y, and Z. And so in terms of moving and positioning items on the screen, you can actually type in values to translate uh, an object, some uh, distance um, in the positive or negative X, Y, or Z. And immediately adjacent to that you see the um, mode right now is relative and if this is highlighted as yellow here it's relative and if it's not then we're in absolute in which case uh, we'd have to type in absolute coordinates of some 
place in space where we want an item to go. Uh, you see there's a key here, an auto key and set key. These are essential elements to setting up an animation later and we'll come back to those eventually. So let's proceed by placing a box out in the scene and I'm going to click and drag. So inside the create tab we see a series of sub uh, menus and they correspond to geometry, shapes, lights, cameras, helpers, space warps and systems. So I'm inside geometry right now and inside that then we see a whole list of geometries that can be produced and in fact that list goes on further. We see standard primitives, extended primitives and so forth. Okay, So when a geometry is placed in the scene and while it's still selected the geometry can be modified right here inside the dialog that corresponds to the item being created. We see a place where we can set up length, width, and height, and we can also set up subdivisions in terms of how many polygons are going to be used to resolve the various sides that comprise this cube. And that'll be more important downstream. Now once we've selected some other item or deselected this uh, box, uh, we can no longer modify its parameters inside the create menu. Instead we move over to the modify tab and inside the modify tab you'll see now we can make adjustments to the width, height and length of this box and make adjustments to the subdivisions that comprise it. Now right now I want to pan and orbit around on this perspective viewport so that we can look at a few other items about the 3D Studio interface. You'll notice in the upper left hand corner of each one of the viewports we see a series of terms inside brackets and if I click on these I get a list, a pop-up list that corresponds to uh, adjustments that can be made in how this particular viewport is going to operate. You'll notice at the top we have uh, a capacity to access different cameras and we do that to be able to cause this viewport to reveal to us what a camera sees and we also can do the same with lights. There's a bunch of canned um, orthographic views and perspective view and we can also handle viewport clipping and some other items in here we'll come back to later. Uh, you'll notice that if we look at these lists in the upper left hand corner of each of the viewports the, the name up here corresponds to this is the front view, this is the top view, this is the left view and uh, this is a default configuration there are a number of predefined viewport configurations if you choose. If you go to the view, pull down to viewport configuration, there's um, all sorts of parameters that can be uh, set up for the viewports. I'm going to look under layout. You'll notice inside here there's a bunch of icons that describe uh, different subdivisions of the screen. Uh, so if you prefer to work with some other mode, that's available to you. And you can also call out if we were to you know, be in this configuration, we could come in here and click and set up a specific view or some portion of the interface we want displayed inside that viewport. Um, I'm going to leave it just the way it is for right now. I actually prefer to work with the, the four quadrants because it's very easily uh, adjusted just by grabbing um, any one of the joints between the viewports and pulling it to one side or the other. Um, you can also use the Alt W keys to maximize an active viewport uh, with respect to that, you'll notice the active viewport has a golden um, outline on it in this particular user interface. And if I made some other viewport active and did Alt W, um, it would make that viewport um, the primary maximized viewport. You can always use Alt W to return it to the quad configuration. Uh, alternatively, the the icon here at the lower left corner does the same thing. These three lists allow us to get to different configurations of the viewport. The one here at the far right side allows us to cause the viewport to render in different ways. Um, right now, let's say we'll make it hidden line, you see, or uh, it's smooth and highlight. And I'm also going to turn on edged faces. And that allows me to see the subdivision of polygons in the shaded viewport. And I actually prefer to work this way. So I do want to note that we also have the view, a view cube that shows up in each of the viewports. You can use this as an alternative way to navigate views and projections that comprise the model scene.